book Mafatih or Miftahul Jannat, written by Sayyid Muhsin Al Amin. In volume number three, page 265, there is a narration by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam where the Holy Prophet outlines the best of days, the best of months, and the best of nights, and the best of books favorable to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has favored Friday out of all other days. And out of the months, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has favored the month of Ramadan. And in the month of Ramadan, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has favored Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr, as it says in uh, Arabic language, it's Layla. And Layla means night. And Qadr is power, or which has got many blessings. So if we put Laylatul Qadr together, it means a night of power. And by that we mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says in the Holy Quran, inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr, for example, in Surah Al-Qadr, then he talks about this special night. So, laylatul qadr is a night of power. It's not like any other night. It is a night which is a special night and it comes only once in a year. And it is in the holy month of Ramadan. As mentioned in Surah Al-Dukhan, that this is the night, Laylatul Qadr, on when the Qur'an was revealed. So we understand from this verse in the Qur'an and from the seer of the Holy Prophet that the revelation of the Holy Qur'an as a divine book was twofold. There were two types of revelations. Ya'ani, the same Qur'an that we have between our hands today, this revelation that descended upon the Rasulullah, there were two types of revelations for the same Quran. One is known as a Nuzul Dafa'i and one which is Tadriji, yani a revelation of the Quran in its entirety upon the heart of Rasulullah on a single night. This is one. And then number two, you have the revelation of the Quran over a period of 23 years. So as historical events unfolded in front of Rasulullah, these verses were revealed by Jibra'il in accordance. And this is how the people and the common masses were exposed or were aware of the revelation that was descending upon the Rasulullah. In addition to this, we have the revelation in its entirety. And each form of revelation of the same Quran has its own hikmah, has its own divine wisdom behind it. But Laylatul Qadr is that night, that divine glorious night where the entire Quran, the Quran in its entirety was revealed upon the heart of Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And hence, this is the first uh, aspect or the first dimension of the significance of Laylatul Qadr. Number two, the second important dimension of Laylatul Qadr, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al Dukhan, Fiha yufraku kullu amrin hakim. Laylatul Qadr is that night where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seals for us our destiny for the coming year in regards to our health, in regards to our wealth, who lives and who dies, is all decided within these nights of Laylatul Qadr. Sheikh Qubi says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destines in this night who is going to be born and who is going to be passing away during this whole coming year. There are people who were present in the last holy month of Ramadan. They were present in the nights of Qadr, the nights of power. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had destined for them that before the arrival of the next Laylatul Qadr, they will be away from this world. They will pass away. And there are individuals who will get married that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destine for them as a result of that marriage. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bless them with the offspring. So a new person will come into this world and the person will depart. All of that is will be destined on Laylatul Qadr. Is that it? No. Shaykh al Qubi continues, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will determine how much the level of sustenance he will reveal upon each individual. And sustenance is not only financial sustenance. Rizq has been described as being, for example, rizq of knowledge, sustenance in knowledge, sustenance in health. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, you've lived your life suffering from poor health. As a result of you supplicating to me and asking me and calling upon me, in Laylatul Qadr, I have determined for you that you will be better. Allah says in the Holy Quran, يَمْحُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيُثْبِتْ وَعِنْدَهُ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ يَمْحُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ Allah may change whatever He wish. Allah may delete whatever He wills. وَيُثْبِتْ and he may decide to assert to keep the way it is whatever he wants وَعِنْدَهُ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ The knowledge of the book, the knowledge of our future is with him. When he says يَمْهُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيُثْبِتْ It means that destiny can be changed number one by dua the way the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said لَا يَرُدُّ الْقَضَاءِ إِلَّا الدُّعَى Number two by your own supplications which you do on specific nights like Laylatul like, like Qadr. Number three, by giving sadaqah. Sadaqah can protect us from many calamities. Not only that, the Holy Prophet says, if you want the angels to forget about you, for you to live longer, make sure you are in good contact with your family members. Swilatul Rahim. So yes, qada is one thing, destiny is one thing, but that destiny, Allah has given us opportunity for us to change. It is we who can decide to make it the way we want. Because he says in the Holy Quran, Udu'uni astajib lakum. Ask me and I will fulfill whatever your wishes. Three important Islamic events that took place in history and uh, Laylatul Qadr, which continues to happen uh, every year in that the malaika descend upon the imam of our time. Mab'ath, Mi'raj and Laylatul Qadr. Mi'raj, Ba'ad, we have the concept of Isra and Mi'raj. A heavenly journey, a divine journey embarked upon by Rasulullah where he travels from Mecca to Masjid al-Kufa and then to Masjid al-Aqsa. And we also have narrations from Ahlul Bayt that Masjid al-Aqsa in essence is one of the Masajid in the third or fourth heavens. For a divine journey embarked upon Rasulullah from Mecca where he goes and he ascends the heavens and gets to the closest metaphorical, metaphorically speaking, the closest point in regards to proximity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala such that you have the verses in the Quran that say, فَكَانَ قَابَ كَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَدْنَى For your information and the information of the viewers, the heavenly journey of Mi'raj was not a one-off journey. In fact, we have within our hadith that Rasulullah went on Mi'raj over 100 times during his uh, life, during his prophethood, 23 years of declaring uh, prophethood. Rasulullah embarked on Mi'raj a number of times, sometimes in the month of Rajab, sometimes in the month of Rabiul Awwal, in Jamadu Thani, and so on and so forth, and even in Shahru Ramadan. So the event of Mi'raj, Rasulullah's heavenly journey, happened a number of times, but there is one Mi'raj or this one journey, which is known as the grand journey, which we describe as Mi'raj, in which all the details 
uh, are mentioned in the books of history. Bab'ath is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when the Holy Prophet was engaging in ibadah, as he was usually doing in the cave in Ghar Hira, in the outskirts of the city of Mecca, Rasulullah, as all the other prophets and messengers, they always chose a secluded location for their ibadah and for their supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In that event, in that day, in that time, the archangel Jibra'il came down and descended upon the Holy Prophet. And he said to the Holy Prophet of Islam, Ya Rasulullah, Iqra. Which is well known by everyone. That the archangel Jibra'il explained to the Holy Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, after 40 years of you supplicating, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and living your life in the best of ways, Allah has chosen for you to start your prophethood from now. He explained the responsibilities laid upon the Holy Prophet by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Rasulullah, you will have to do this. You will have to convey this message to this group of people. Allah has sent you to prophethood to the people of the Arabian Peninsula to guide them out of the ignorance that they are living in. And keep in mind that this day also marks the revelation of the first ayahs of the Quran. However, this does not contradict the revelation of the Quran in its entirety. During Laylatul Qadr, there are two different events but the common denominator between both these events is that both of them include the revelation of verses or the dissension of verses upon Rasulullah. From, from my readings from the books of uh, Ulumul Quran, Sciences of the Holy Quran and the Tafsir of the Holy Quran is that Laylatul Mab'ath or the day of Mab'ath, Jibra'il came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam to declare to him and to the world that the Holy Prophet has been appointed as Rasul. However, the first surah to be revealed, surah Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, and the whole Quran to be revealed in the sky of this world that happened during the holy month of Ramadan. Proof of that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah Al-Baqarah. The verses starting from ayah number 183 up to ayah 187 of Surah Al-Baqarah, they discuss about ahkam of Shah Ramadan. In it we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an, hudan linnasi, wa bayinatim min al-huda wal-furqan. Shah Ramadan unzila fihi al-Qur'an. It is in it the Holy Qur'an was revealed. So the Holy Quran was revealed as the whole of it in Shah Ramadan, Laylatul Qadr. And that's why it's, it's so important for us to recite the Holy Quran in that particular night and other nights. Quran was revealed part here, part there. A piecemeal here, a piecemeal there. This happened during different months. But when we talk about revela revelation of the Holy Quran in, it, in its totality, it happened during the holy month of Ramadan and it was in Laylatul Qadr. So Laylatul Qadr is a gateway to going through to the Mab'ath and the Mi'raj of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. The end result of the Bi'atha and the Mi'raj is Laylatul Qadr. Because through Mi'raj and Mab'ath we come to reach Laylatul Qadr which is reaching Ahlul Bayt and the Holy Quran. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam comes to say, in the, in the last hours of his life, on numerous occasions he spoke about this riwayah and this message, but he repeated it in the last moments of his life, O oh Muslims, I am leaving behind two precious things, two precious items. You will never go astray until you let go of these two precious items. Let So Laylatul Qadr is a translation of this narration 
that Rasulullah left behind the Ahlul Bayt and the Holy Quran for the guidance of mankind. According to narrations, if we are looking at the hadith from the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Aima of Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasalam, then we come to learn that Laylatul Qadr can be uh, either can be found on the 19th night of Shah Ramadan or 21st night of Shah Ramadan or 23rd night of Shah Ramadan. There are other narrations which says even 25th or 27th, even 29th, those odd nights. So it is a night which can be found on these nights within last 10 nights of Shah Ramadan. There are other narrations or there are narrations by Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt that come and say that spend the last 10 nights of the holy month of Ramadan and supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they've, they've given us a general time span of when maybe Laylatul Qadr will lie in one of these nights in the, in the last 10 nights of Shah Ramadan. There are other riwayat that come and specifically outline three or four nights out of the last 10 nights of Shah Ramadan. Why? Because Ahlul Bayt, they were seen to excessively supplicate and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last 10 nights of Shah Ramadan more than the other nights. No, they were worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the other nights of Shah Ramadan, but they concentrated, they, they encouraged the Mu'mineen, the Muslims, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more and more in the last 10 nights. So the three nights or the four nights in Shah Ramadan, in the last 10 nights of Shah Ramadan, are the nights of the 19th, the 21st, the 23rd, and there are some narrations, the 27th of Shah Ramadan. But we have more narrations that come and explain that uh, the most important night, which is known to be Laylatul Qadr, is the 23rd, the night of the 23rd of Shah Ramadan al-Mubarak. Yeah, it's, it's a very good question in terms of uh, why not one night, why three, or even why more than three? When you look at the, the importance of the night and the blessings which are there and the reward, immense reward which is there, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make it just one night, it could be easy maybe, I'm saying easy, could be easy for people to say, okay, we are going to stay this particular night until we get the blessings of it and then we leave. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see some sort of efforts from us. So he says, I will hide it within these nights, either the whole last 10 days of uh, Shah Ramadan or within specific nights or at least three in order for you to show that eagerness that you want to go closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah loves us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes the sound, Ya Allah, Ya Rabbi, Mawlaya, and so on and so forth. He wants to hear that we call him, we go near him and we beseech him, we pray to him. He wants to see that from us. That's why he made it in night, night of 19th and 21st and even 23rd in order for us to be able to go closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's number one. Number two, it could be maybe, let's say night of 19th, 19th night. I didn't do much ibadah. I miss to do some acts of worship. Allah is giving me another opportunity. Come my servant, 21st is there for you. If I did something, maybe I wasn't satisfied with whatever I did, there's another night which is 23rd, and so on and so forth. But at the same time, look at the, the, the geography of this world which we are living in. You can see that, for example, in Europe and America, especially Europe, the Shah Ramadan will be in summertime. So we don't have much time of ibadah at night. Maybe we will have less than three hours for us to do a'mal of Laylatul Qadr. 
But other people in other parts of the world, Africa and Asia and, and other uh, areas of Middle East, they have plenty of time to do ibadah. So imagine if we want to compare ourselves to those who are there, they have plenty of hours to do their ibadah. We won't be able to do it in one night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again is giving us another opportunity to say, okay, you're in summertime, one night is not enough, I'll give you three. And I know people, when they go for ibadah of Laylatul Qadr, they don't want to be disturbed by anything because they know the importance and secret and, and spirituality which is there. So they want to be there in terms of ibadah for them to finish a'mal, all the du'as, or supplication, recitation of the Holy Quran, and salah, and so on and so forth. So I think for me, it is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given us not only one night, but three and maybe five or seven or so on and so forth. One of the a'mal of Layal al-Qadr, of the nights of destiny or the determining or the power is keeping awake keeping awake until the early hours of the next day the seerah of the holy prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to make sure he stays awake to find these or this particular laylatul qadr now a question do i just stay awake not doing anything or engaging in other activities, or I have to stay awake to engage in specific activities. Because there are individuals who say, okay, that's easy. I, 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 would, I would like to stay awake all night. I will engage in, for example, watching programs on TV or playing games or, you know, going out. No. The sole purpose of Ahlul Bayt encouraging Muslims and Mu'mineen to do ihya, staying awake the nights of Laylatul Qadr, is to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whatever means you see fit. There are individuals who like to stay at home in the confinement of their homes. They choose a location for themselves and they themselves, by themselves, they supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They put their prayer mat and they say they stay on their prayer mat the duration of that night. Between recitation of the Holy Quran, between recitation of the supplications received by Ahlul Bayt salam, between repenting and seeking repentance, doing istighfar, between, for example, paying charity or between increasing their knowledge and studying the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt salam. So, these are the recommended acts of doing ihya, staying awake, just for the sole purpose of supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is hadith which the Holy Prophet or the family of the Holy Prophet, the wives of the Holy Prophet say that uh, when the last 10 of Shah Ramadan used to come or approach, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَشُدُّ مِئِزَرًا The Holy Prophet would tie his waist tight. This is a, a metaphor, a kinaya to say that Rasulullah would wake up, would be busy to do ibadah on these layali, which are known as Al-Qadr, on Laylatul Qadr. And in, in his seerah, you can see that he stayed awake for the whole night till Fajr. He recited Quran, he recited Dua, he used to advise his companions to do the same. He used to ask the family members, Ahlul Bayt and others to be awake. Why? Because it's a special night. Why special night? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Qadr, Laylatul Qadri khayrun min alfi shahr. This one night of Qadr is better than a thousand months. For that it means if you do ibadah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts your ibadah, the acts of worship on this particular night, the way the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do, it means that the thawab, the reward of your amal of one night will be equal to a thousand months. 
it is equally about 80 plus years of a human. This is a life of a human being. So the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do a lot of ibadah on these nights which are known as Layalul Qadr. And we have riwayat from Ahlul Bayt. It is advisable for an individual to spend Laylatul Qadr by the shrines of Ahlul Bayt and specifically by the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Why? Because it is definite that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer the call of that individual who is next to the burial site of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings of Imam Hussein alayhi salam will instruct the malaika to wipe away all of the sins and mistakes and wrongdoings of that moment. And of course, on top of dua, we have Quran to recite the Holy Quran. And as per the a'mal which are done on the Laylatul Qadr, of course, we have Surah Al Qadr, you have Surah Al Ikhlas, you have Surah Al Dukhan, Surah Al Rum, and many other surahs. This is to say, don't forget Quran because Quran is the book which was revealed in Laylatul Qadr. Shahar Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al Quran. Shahar Ramadan is the month which the Holy Quran was revealed. And if the Holy Quran was revealed in Shah Ramadan, I think the best of amal also to be done is to recite the Holy Quran on Laylatul Qadr. Raf'ul Masahif, placing the Holy Quran on top of the head and supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his name and in the names of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam repeating Allah's name and the names of the 14 infallibles 10 times and concluding that with asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your utmost or utmost important requirement and request that you want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we usually say that make the first of dua and the first of supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of that act, the hastening and the quickening of the reappearance of Imam al-Mahdi Ajallahu ta'ala farajah al-Sharif and one of the recommended acts in that night is to pray for the well-being of Imam al-Mahdi Ajallahu ta'ala farajah al-Sharif so when you pray for the Imam you remember your Imam in the Laylatul Qadr and this is the night that the angels come down upon Imam al-Mahdi Ajallahu ta'ala farajah al-Sharif the Imam will not forget you the Imam will include you in his prayers and his dua and when you receive the dua of an imam of an infallible imam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely will answer their call the best dua to ask for in my humble opinion on Laylatul Qadr is praying to hasten the reappearance of Mawlana Sahib al-Amri wa zaman ajalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif and as important as important to that dua is to pray, Ya Allah, make us or make me to be deserving to be from amongst the companions of Imam al hujjah This is as important as asking dua for hastening the reappearance of Imam. I may be praying for the reappearance of the Imam. God forbid, God forbid, when the Imam reappears, I end up being one of the enemies of the Imam who will challenge the Imam. Why? Because the Imam comes with a manhaj that contradicts my personal, ideological, political, or social, or economic understanding of Islam. Hence, much as it is important to pray for the dhuhr of the Imam, person needs to pray that, Ya Allah, if this, if this, Dhuhr happens in my lifetime, which I pray, Ya Allah, you make it happen. Also make me deserving to be from amongst the companions of the Imam. As you know, that Laylatul Qadr, one of the khususiyat is that when the Dhuhr of the 12th Imam happens, the Sayhah, the cry of Jibra'il will also occur on the 23rd night of Shahr Ramadan, which is one of the nights of Laylatul Qadr. The best of A'mal in Laylatul Qadr, number one, is to recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That ma'rifah of Allah is very important. Ma'rifah of Allah can come through reading Quran with tafsir and understanding. 
ma'rifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can come through our dua by recitation of dua we know who are we asking ma'rifa of Allah can come through our prayers when we do physical actual salah qiyam ruku sujood kunut and so on and so forth if we know that we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the best action which we need to do is to know and recognize Allah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our ma'rifa will come through reading through learning from the scholars through listening to the lectures if we can be able to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly then that by itself will change our future that by itself it will make us to be better people that by itself it will make me keep myself away from that which is haram and I will go to do that which is wajib however when we say knowing Allah knowing Allah is the highest form of ibadah which we can do it by reading by studying by asking by listening to the scholars however there are many other a'mal which we can do when we talk about best a'mal there is no best of a'mal to be done on laylatul qadr like to repent to go back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at the children when they cause trouble to their parents and they leave the family they go away sometimes something comes into their mind and they say no uh, we are wrong let's go back to our mom and dad that returning to the father and mother of, for, for their children to return to them can you imagine how happy a mother and father will be when they see their children coming back and if that can happen in the holy month of ramadan and if that can happen in the laylatul qadr now imagine allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we wrong ourselves and sometimes shaitan makes us to forget allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah knows because he says in the holy quran wala takunu kalladhina nasu allah fa ansahum anfusahum don't be like those people who forget allah because allah will cause them to forget themselves so now we have this realization that we need to go back to allah through the way of tauba and repentance that is the best form of ibadah which we need to know during the laylatul qadr but for those people who have not wronged themselves they are sincere obedient obedient people the best amal is dua masala by sitting and asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there will be many people many many things which will be realized one when you do dua and you ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it shows that you know who are you doing dua to you know that you are supplicating allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that realization through dua an act which shows humility and humbleness it is as if you are saying ya allah i don't have anyone except you this dua is very important and shaitan doesn't want us to do dua he may confuse us not to be able to do dua